Okay, so this is S1 NXL 2016 question 3. I had quite a few requests for this. This is going to be the last question I do from this paper. Could be the last question I'll do from S1 altogether, um, which will be good, really. Anyway, um, yeah, looking at it, I can see why um, it causes a bit of problems as well. Um, boundaries for S1 in general were relatively low last year. But anyway, let's just. Um, go through the standard deviation things okay we know the standard deviation of x we know we just need to know the formula for it or one of the for the most useful formula normally is this one sigma x squared over n take away mu squared so that's sigma x squared we're given is 985.88 over n, and we'll get, we know there's 8 weeks, take away mu squared, so that's 86.8 .8 is a mean divided by 8 squared, and that will give us a standard deviation when we work that out um, to 2 significant figures, it comes to 2.35, so no problems there, I doubt if that's what causes the difficulty. Um, a little bit with part B though, it's only one mark and the, you know those examiners they really are they really like to change things and twist it around and, and make life hard at times. Um and we've kind of done here. Um obviously the fact that it's one mark so yes it's quick and easy. I'll just uh, go to the former page. Um it's kind of this I think will be more useful this version of the form of this earlier bit here and here for this so I'm going to use that I might paste that and put it into the book okay but we also know that the standard deviation supposedly um, alternative formula to this one don't use it very often, but we actually use, get to use it twice in this paper. It's kind of the sum of the squares of the deviations from the mean divided by the number. Well, we've got a, we need to work out S Y Y is seven hundred and sixteen. Well, that be, basically means this bit here is S Y Y. So that means S Y Y is equal to n which in this case is 8 times by standard deviation which is 9.461 my apologies it's a rookie error obviously it's the variance it's that because it would be a square root if it was a standard deviation so we need to say that syy is equal to the Variance, which is that number squared times by 8. Sorry about that, I would normally correct that, but I'm rushing this off, so let's get it all done. So that's 8 times by 9.461 squared, which is 716. Okay, so that's that bit done. And then we talk about the product moment correlation coefficient. Um, this is given in the formula book as well. Um, oh no, that's the later part. We need to look at part C now. Right, so the formula for SXY is equal to basically sigma XY take away sigma x sigma y over n well we've got sigma x we've got sigma x y um, we don't have sigma y but we do have the mean of y and that's the same as the mean of y so we could also say that sigma x y minus sigma x and minus the mean of y, which is that bit, times by sigma x. 
so that gives us theta to 4900.5 zero, zero take away 58 times 86.4 58 which is our mean y times 58 times by 86.4 so that comes to negative 133.9 okay so let's see done now part D and I thought this was going to pose much R is equal to much of a problem is equal to SXY divided by the square root of SXX SXY and we've got all this data I think somewhere apologies I'll be seeing this y y there ok so a massive form but well actually I do have to do a bit more work than I thought looking at it even though there's only two marks um, these are similar arguments of this here basically here we said that SYY is equal to n times sigma y squared so we can also say SXX is equal to n times sigma x squared and we've got that information from there 8 times 2.35 squared which if we use the exact answer from that comes to 44.1 or something so that gives us r equals to we've got all the data now that was minus 1 3.9 now so if r is minus 133.9 over the square root of sxx which is 44.1 times by syy which is 716 and that comes to minus 0.2 I've actually got it to four significant figures of minus 0 0.7535 three significant figures which goes to 0 0.753753 but they did accept 0 0.753 or 0 0.754 Okay, anything added to either of those two is right, but to four significant figures, that's what the um, actual answer is to four significant figures. Okay, right, final bit of this question. Um, it says during Tanya's week long holiday at Seaport, there are 14 millimeters of rain and 70 hours of sunshine. Well, it says state given a reason what effect of adding the information to the above data would be on the value of a product moment correlation coefficient I'm going to do a rough um, diagram ok we've got 8 days we've got some kind of rough negative correlation no. there we go, something like that OK, and it, there's going to be a regression line that goes down, which something like that. The one thing that's really you should know is that that re re regression line goes for x bar, y bar. OK, so, and we know that x bar, y bar, here in this case, is going to be, um, x bar is... 10.85 and then um, y bar is given as 58 now why have I done this it helps to explain really what the effect of this extra value is so that's we, we should know really um, that the regression line goes for the mean point big fact that we don't often emphasize enough really that, that regression line will be go to the mean point of the um, of, of the two bits of data okay so you don't have to explain that. I'm just trying to you know, justify what what the decision was the, 
something we're going to say about what it what effect it has. Okay, now here it's saying there's a new piece of data here with 14 millimeters of rain. So this is X, 14 millimeters of rain, so that's somewhere down here. But 70 hours of sunlight, so it's kind of up here somewhere. Okay, so it's got high of both, you know, that, that um, it's both greater in rain and greater in sunshine. So how does this help us answer the question? Well, it does, this isn't really fitting with the trend, is it? it? You know, normally we would expect, you know, things to be, if, if one of them is greater than the mean, the other one is going to be less than the mean. Or in this case, you know, the other way around. So, whereas this, they're both greater than the mean. So since both x and y greater than x bar and y bar which does not fit with trend of negative correlation of negative correlation the correlation will be weaker so that means that R will get closer to zero Okay, so that's uh, this done really, um, probably my last S1 video, not a classic, but uh, hopefully it is um, nevertheless useful to you, and good luck folks on Wednesday. Bye.